Hello and welcome to The Human Heart, a visual novel by Leon the Lionel. You can see the, like, the name right at the bottom uh, right corner. Um, yeah. I've been doing this one on and off on my own back when I think there was only like one or two chapters of it done. But I'm, I think that there's more, you know, done. So, you know, we're gonna start it off and then go on as it updates. Pretty sure you can already tell who my favorite character in this story is gonna be. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's begin. A darkness sweeps over you. As rain pours down your entire being, the cold rushes through your body. Frozen, unable to move, consciousness fading, nothing more to do. Shrouded in the veil of darkness and cloaked in the harsh, damp, and frigid wind, you breathe your last breath, and as your heart was about to stop beating, suddenly... A warmth. A faint voice was calling to you from beyond. A soothing, friendly feeling meets your body. One you were not familiar of prior to this moment. Even if just a little bit, it fills you with warmth. Hope. The strength to continue. It fills you with... Life. Day 1. A voice you don't recognize speaks to you. Hello? You couldn't muster up a reply. The most you could do was let out groans of pain. Holy crud! You're still breathing? But those groans were enough for the mysterious speaker. We need to get you out of here fast! Soon enough, the warmth turned into a mild heat as you felt yourself be lifted off the ground. With all the strength that you can muster, and urged by curiosity, you managed to open your eyes. What are you? You're live! Who? I'm Cade. I'm here to help you, bud. You'll be safe soon. C Cade? Yeah, that's my name. Do you have a name, too? My name? Yeah, let's keep you. Oh, God. This is a, a joke within the game. Um, it's Hugh. That's a great name, bud. Your lungs filled up with the cold, eliciting a harsh set of coughs. Keep resting. We'll get you out of the rain soon, Hugh. Thank you. You feel too lightheaded, not having enough strength to go on. You faint. You were in a long, deep sleep, cold and dizzy. Heat was coming back to you in tiny increments. Soon enough, you felt the thud of the floor on your back, enough to wake you up. Did I let you down too hard? Sorry, bot. Is the blanket okay? Are you alright? You were coughing a lot back there. What in the... Buddy? You take a moment to take in your surroundings, soon focusing on the figure in front of you. Bear! Ah! Gah! You swiftly back away into a column. Don't eat me! I taste bland! I swear! You throw some hay at the bear's face. What? Hey, it's okay. I ain't gonna do that. What do you take me for? Y you talk? And so can you. A bear? That can talk? <laughs> I'm dead, aren't I? Excuse me? This can't be real. None of this is happening. Look, I can tell you're freaking out, but I gotta get out of here. Hey, wait! You push the barn doors open as fast as you could. I gotta... Where am I? Before you know it, lightning strikes right in front of you. Gah! You alright? Crazy thunderstorm out there. You fall to your knees and soon turn around. What is this? You grab a bunch of hay from the floor and threaten the bear as if you were holding a weapon. Hey, hey, I know you're confused. I kind of am, too. The bear draws closer to you. But 
I swear, I ain't gonna hurt ya. It raises its arms and sits down across from you. I'm sure you're scared and confused. I sort of am too, but I swear, I'm here to help. You decide to ask a question. Hmm, how did I get here? No. Hmm. How did I get here? Well, I took you in here, of course. Uh, why did you do that? Yous were passed out by the tree, and it's raining. I had to help. You stayed quiet to ponder for a moment. Uh, how did I get under the tree, then? I don't know myself, actually. Then, how did I get there? I ain't have the slightest clue. All I know was, you were there, and I helped you get over here, under the nice, not wet, barn roof. Uh, oh. You decide to ask a question. Mm. I'm pretty sure he's gonna say, oh, well, you're in the barn. W where am I? You're in a barn, silly. What did I say? Well, that's not what I meant. Then what exactly are you asking here, bud? Where is here? You angrily gesture to the floor beneath you. Oh, well, you're in beautiful, sunny... Cap... Kapaya... Kapayapan? Village, of course. The bear stares and thinks for a moment. Well, it ain't sunny right now, but it usually is. Kapaya... Papa? How do you even pronounce that? Exactly, how do you pronounce that? It's pretty easy, really. Just say every syllable like you're saying the first one from Papa. What? You decide to ask a question. What are you? What are you? Well, you already know what I am. W what? I'm a bear, silly. You yelled at yourself earlier. N no, but how are you walking and talking like that? You make rushed and panicked gestures at his entire being. I... I don't get what you mean. You're walking and talking just like I am. But, but bears don't do that. They can't do that. Well, maybe they can walk on their hind legs, but still. I'm guessing bears don't usually talk where you're from. I'm, uh... Yeah, they don't. They usually just want to eat you. Well, I don't know what neck of the woods you're from, but we ain't cannibals here. You stare at the ground for a moment. I see. You decide to ask a question. Are you Cade? Uh, are you Cade? You said in a less aggressive tone than any other question before. Mm-hmm. As guilty as charged. So you were carrying me earlier? Yup, to this barn, like I said. Huh. So... That was you that felt so warm. You all right there, bud? Hmm. Uh, sure, I guess. If you're sure. But just in case you know, I'm always here for helping a friend in need. Friend. You sit down and defeat. Man, I'm really talking to a bear right now, huh? And I'm sitting here talking to, uh... He says his words as if expecting you to fill in a blank. A human. Huh. I ain't never met one of those before. Ditto. You cough again. Uh, you alright? It's just a cough. <clears throat> I'll be fine. Another cough exits your mouth. Need some water, bud? Yes, please. Let me get some from Onuts. You stay put, alright? The bear picks up an umbrella. Not like I know where else to go. That's the spirit. I'll be right back, okay? Before the bear could push open the door, someone else steps in. Hey, Kate. You... Hey? Uh... What in the blazes is that? Hey, uh, Dylan. He's, uh, not important right now. What do you mean he's not important? It looks like you skinned a monkey. That's rude. What? No, I never do that. Then what the heck is that? It's a, uh, I don't know actually. Then why are you keeping it at the barn? Are you crazy? Uh, 
That thing could have laser eyes or possess your soul or something. I will, uh, be right back, you. Uh, bye? The bear pushes the blue mole outside. You gave it a name? Shh, I'll explain on the way. What is happening? Ugh. This can't be freaking happening. You walk over to a nearby window. Calm down, Hugh. It's not the end of the world. You take a couple of minutes to breathe and compose yourself. Deep breaths. Helping in big breaths, you take in your surroundings and look at the scenery in front of you. Grassy plains with mountains and an ocean across from a view of a tiny village in the distance. What did you get yourself into now, Hugh? You listen to the sound of the rain, harshly pouring down onto the grass and the roof of the barn. It might have been loud, but it was still a calming sound. Brr. You shiver in place. The cold breeze was hitting you ever so slightly, fighting against your efforts to calm yourself. Okay, Hugh. You're in an unknown place right now. You're cold, you're confused, and there are walking, talking animals. But... Hmm... You can make the most of it. I mean, everyone wants to live in a world with walking, talking animals, right? No matter how weird the situation is, better make the most of it. Just gotta learn how to adjust to this new world for a while. Another breeze hits your face. You cough again. It shouldn't be all too bad. I mean, the first local I met was real nice. You turn your gaze back inside the barn, away from the cold blast of rain outside. What's his name? Cade, right? You cough again. For now, I need to figure out what to do from here. You take in a deep breath. You've got this, Hugh. I've got this. The barn doors open behind you. You got what, Hugh? Oh, um, you're back. Yeah, I got that water you asked for, and some food too, just in case. He hands you the pastries and the water. You take it from him, ever so slowly. Thanks, Cade. No problem, buddy. You take a swig of the water and a bite of the food. To your surprise, it tastes really good. He's only been here for like a couple hours. Half spent asleep, mind you. And you're already calling him buddy? Well, you know what they say. A stranger's just a friend you haven't met. That mantra's gonna get you kidnapped one day. It already has. Multiple times. But that ain't gonna stop me. Of course it won't. But, um, hello there, Hugh, right? You nod as you engorge in your food. I'm Dylan. He reaches out his hand towards you. I'm gonna ignore his hand. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna shake it, I guess. Hugh. You say with a mouth full of food. The mole nods at you. Nice to meet you, Hugh. Hmm? See? You two are getting along already. So, um, mind if I ask you some questions? Can I eat first? You say with bread in your mouth. Oh, um, sure. Sorry. A couple of minutes go by. You soon ate all of the food and drank most of the water that was given to you, all the while the two animals talk about you in private. You really like those pastries, huh? Mm-hmm. Better than what I could eat back home. Home? Hmm? They were made by our friend Tyler. I'm sure he'd love to know you like his cooking. I'm not sure telling more people would be the best idea, Cade. I mean, Tyler's nice. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. I don't know if I want anyone else to know I'm here. You start to shiver from the rain. Hmm. I gotta get you some more blankets. Be nice to him, D. The mole nods at the bear. Um, hi. Hey. Mind if I ask those questions now? Um, go ahead, I guess. Your shivering gets worse and you start to cough more. Oh, geez. Are you alright? My immune system isn't... good. Hey, I'm back! Kate, we gotta get him someplace warmer. He's dying out here. Hmm? I guess you're right. He doesn't have much fur on him. Kate wraps you in the blanket that he brought. I don't think he has any fur on him. Say, D. Hmm? Does your uncle still have a spare room in his apartment? 
Are we really gonna hide him there? Hide me where? People are gonna see him. It'll be the best place to keep him till we can figure things out. I guess so. I think you can lay low for a while, Hugh. You give a thumbs up as your entire body shakes. Oh, geez, it's getting worse. We should get going then. Right. We should go around back at Old Nuts first. Hmm. You okay so far, buddy? You nod, despite the fact that you're shivering. We ought to be quick then. Phew, no one saw us. You'll be warm soon, buddy, don't worry. Your nose starts stripping, and you kept coughing. Come on, just a little further now. Let's cut this corner here. Okay, this should be it. The vacant room is in the fourth floor, last door. We can't make him walk all the way up there. Look at him. I can. Don't strain yourself, Hugh. I'll go distract the people. Kate, go and carry him up to the room. The bear nods. Here's the key. Make sure no one sees him. Dylan tosses the pair of keys into Kate's hands. What? Do I get a say in this? Not unless it's a thank you. Now let's go. Cade carries you in his arms again as you make your way to the upper levels. Hey, come to think of it, how is Dylan gonna distract everyone from down there? Suddenly, a voice comes up from down below. It sounds like as if it's spoken through a megaphone. Due to unforeseen circumstances involving a nest of buzzes, we urge all guests to stay indoors. The sound quickly gets louder, as if it was drawing closer to you. I repeat, please stay indoors for the next five minutes. Soon enough, you see Dylan holding a megaphone, climbing up the stairs. I'll go on ahead, guys. Gotta make sure it's clear. Since when did you get a megaphone? It's how we deal with noisy tenants. Enough about that, though. He gives you both a nod before continuing to shout up the stairs. Ah, that's how. Kate continues to carry you up into the last floor. We're almost there, bud. You can rest on a nice, comfy bed soon. You approach the last door in the hallway. Kate turns in the key and opens it up. Soon after getting inside a vacant room, you were laid on top of a bed. Woo, that was stressful. How you feeling, bud? He takes off your wet blanket and covers you up with a new one. I'll be fine. You say it with heavy breaths and sniffles, making the bear worry even more. I don't know nothing about your kind, but I hope you ain't dying. It's just a bad cold, if you know what that is. Oh, we have those here. Let me see if I can get you some warm soup. Soup is always good for your bad cold. I'll ask Dylan if he has any. Mmm. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Thank you. Hey, don't mention it. I have to. No one's ever been this nice to me. Glad I can be the first then, bud. Oh, why are you doing this? What do you mean? I mean, why do all of this for someone who is... You sneeze. Bless ya. Who's basically a stranger. Hey, someone's hurting is someone's hurting. Don't matter if I know who or what they are. I'll go get you that soup now. Stay put, alright? The large bear leaves the room, so you had it all to yourself for a while. First day of wherever the hell I am, and I spent it being sick. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't, though. Hell, I don't even know why I'm here. You try to adjust your sitting position, but instantly you feel something solid coming from your back pocket. My phone. Maybe I could call someone or something. Find some answers, maybe. Anything. You put the device in your hands and turned it on. Yes, still charged. There's gotta be something in here that explains things. You frantically fiddle with your mobile device for a hot minute. Gah, no calls, no apps, my gallery's just filled with pictures of crows. Or are those ravens? Why did I take so many- Ah, who cares? It's not anything useful. You reach the contacts section of your phone. Maybe I can call someone for help? To your surprise, the contact list was empty. What in the- I have no connections to anyone? 
Maybe I can call emergency services? Yeah, they'll know what to do. You dial your country's emergency hotline. Nothing happens. Dang it. You try over and over and over and over and over and over. Gah! But nothing happens. I'm stuck here, aren't I? You laugh to yourself in hysteria. But why? You look down at your own two hands, but before you could ponder the meaning of the universe, someone steps inside the room. Uh, hey, so Kate's getting you some soup outside. Apparently you have a cold. Oh, hi. I'm getting better, though. Might not need the soup that much. That won't stop Kate from getting you some, though. And why are you here? I mean, I just helped save you from dying. I think I deserve those questions now. He sits down across from you. I guess that's fair. So, um, what do you want to know? The mole ponders for a while, but he eventually speaks up. Well, first of all, what are you? I'm a human, though I guess that's not a common thing around here, based on how you reacted. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to insult you, but you'd be surprised. Hmm? Humans are actually pretty well known in some areas. Oh? But mostly as folklore and myths, it's surprising to see one in the flesh, uh, so to speak. Oh. Yeah, like everyone knows your kind isn't real. I'm still kind of taken aback myself. <laughs> the mole lets out a cough and continues. T uh, do you know how you got here? I wish I did. Hmm. I, I see. You fiddle around with your fingers. Uh, how was life back at your home? Uh, I don't remember. Really? Nothing comes to mind? No. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to say it. Um... What planet were you from? That's a weird question. Sorry, just making sure. Well, I was from Earth, so I don't know if this place is called the same thing. Huh. It is called the same thing. Whoa, that's really weird. Yeah, it is. You two stayed quiet for a while until Dylan continued his inquiries. Hmm. What's the last thing that you remember before waking up? Wind chimes. Wind chimes? Yeah, they sounded so peaceful, uh, so calm. Mm, that's good. Another moment of silence passes between the both of you. Uh, how are you feeling? Mm. You were in a pretty bad shape back there. Are you feeling any better? Yeah, thanks to Dylan. <laughs> um, I want to be a little antagonistic. Because that's apparently how I play everything. Until I start feeling remorse. I'm still kind of cold, but it's getting better. That's good. Yeah, even if by a little, it's good. Hey, is that a phone? Hmm? The mole looks at the mobile device that you've plopped down besides you. Oh, uh, yeah. Can I take a look at it? If that's okay? Uh, sure, I guess. There's nothing on it anyway. You hand him your phone. I see. Very similar model from what we have here. That's cool, I guess. The mole fiddles around with your phone for a while. What are you doing? There, I hooked up your phone to the building's Wi-Fi, and I gave you some contact numbers, so, um... It wasn't as empty in there. Would my SIM card even work here? Wanna text me and test it out? He hands you your phone back and grabs his own out of his vest. Uh, sure. You go to your contacts. To your surprise, he put in two numbers. Whose numbers are these? It's just mine and Kate's, just in case. You go to your contact labeled Dylan and shoot him a message saying hi. Ah, it works! Look, I got your message! He shows you his phone screen. Uh, send me a message then, let's see if that works. Ah, of course! Dylan types on his phone for a little bit. Your own phone rings soon after. You look to see what the message was. Hi! 
You look up at the mole, who seems to be rather surprised. Huh. I didn't think that would work. Yeah, me neither. Guess your world isn't so different from ours, huh? I guess not. Uh, say, this all must be very confusing for you, right? Yeah, very. I mean, it might be too soon to ask, but what's your plan while you're here? Uh... Get out of... I don't know. Hmm... I'm not really sure, but I'm making the most of it. I see. I'll figure it out as I go, I guess. Well, that's good. The bear soon returns to the room, bowl of warm macaroni soup in hand. Hey, uh, I don't know if you have any allergies, but I grabbed some macaroni. It looked like the safest. Uh, hope that's okay. He places it on the table in front of you. I see you two are getting along, though. Oh, yeah. I was just asking you here some questions. Oh, what kind of questions? Kate sits beside Dylan. I'll tell you later, Kate. Oh man, no fair. I told you everything earlier. You grab the bowl of soup and stare at it for a while. The two mammals notice this. You okay there, Hugh? Is something wrong? Are you allergic to pasta? Dang it, I should have grabbed clucking noodle soup. Kate, that also has pasta in it. Double dang it! Oh, bud. Like I said, no need to. No, really. Thank you. I don't know what was happening to me, but I've never seen anyone be so kind as to... Carry me out of the rain, wrap me in a blanket, get me food and water, let me stay in an apartment, and now, this bowl of soup. Tears start pouring out of your face. So really, thank you. Both of you. Hey, it's alright, bud. Yeah, no need to, um, cry. You stretch out your arms and yawn. Hey, how's about me and Dylan step out for a bit? Give you some air. But Kate... He's had a long day, T. We should give him some space. Yeah, you're right. You guys sure I can stay here for the night? Eh, the place is vacant anyway. What if someone finds me here? No way! It's not too much of a hassle to stay? Nope. Thanks. Heh, <laughs> enjoy your soup, buddy. Get well soon. See ya, Hugh. He gives you a pat on the head as both of them leave the room. I'm really stuck here, aren't I? You take a look at your surroundings. You spot a TV and its remote. I could use some background noise right about now. You grab the remote and turn it on. The news is the first channel that appears. It was a weather report describing how harsh the current storm is at the moment. Whoa, glad we got out of that then. You take a swig of your soup. It's not great, but it's warm. Bland. You sat there watching the news and eating your soup, for what seemed to be about 20 minutes. You could see more animal people through the television. It still seemed weird to you. You let out a deep sigh and proceeded to the sink to wash your bowl. I should give this back to Cade when he comes back. What am I saying? Why do I care about these guys? No, they did all of this for me. I should care about them. No, I do care about them. You lay your hands on top of the counter and face the other direction. You soon notice the door to what looks to be the bathroom, right in front of you. I am a bit sticky from the rain. I'm sure no one would mind if I took a shower. And so you do just that, entering the bathroom. You disrobe yourself and start the water. Staring outside the window, you ponder once again. I guess I really am stuck here, aren't I? You take in another deep breath. Hopefully things won't be so bad, but like I said, gotta make the most of it. I've got this. A couple of minutes go by while you were in the shower. It was only after exiting the bathroom that you realized that you didn't have any spare clothes. Crud. You proceed to wash your clothes in the sink with the bar of soap that you used to wash the dishes. They should be dry before tomorrow, hopefully. You hang them on the top of the chair outside the, in the balcony. In the meantime, I need some rest. You walk over to the bed and grab the blankets that you were wrapped in previously. Huh. They feel soft. 
you lay yourself on the bed and wrap yourself up in said blanket. This is your new life, Hugh. Whatever happens, happens. Suddenly your phone rings as if it received a message. You look to see what it was. Hey Hugh, Dylan gave me your number. I didn't know you guys had phones. I hope you're okay though. It's dark out now. Just wishing you good night. Good night. Hmm. Text him back. Thanks, Cade. You too. See you tomorrow, bud. Tomorrow. Before turning your phone off, you took a look at the date displayed on it. August 1st? You let out a deep sigh. This is going to be a long summer. You shut your phone off and close your eyes to try to fall asleep. Despite all the questions lingering in your head, you managed to do so. And so you sleep until the next morning comes. And there it is again. The wind chimes. Why? You struggle to keep yourself asleep as the noise gets louder and louder. What is this? What does it mean? There are no answers for you thus far. Tomorrow is another day. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. <laughs> so, uh, we got to meet the first two of the cast members. Cade, not cast members, the two first, two first characters. Cade and Dylan. Ah, oh, look, there's Cade down here in the bottom. Um, so yeah. What do you guys think so far? So, this is obviously another one of those, um, what's it called? Isekai stories where the protagonist gets, um, sent to another world. And, um, you know, they kind of have to figure out what's going on, if they're going to be able to get home, if they're stuck there, etc., etc. But, um, unlike most other stories, like, you know, you know, Far Beyond the World or Ad Astra, this at least seems a little wholesome, you know. And the next uh, day, day two, you, get, you guys get to meet the rest of the other characters. And obviously I already have a preference for one of them. And here's a cookie for anyone that can figure out who is my personal favorite. And without really realizing who the or knowing what the characters are or who they are or whatever you know it's just a toss-up is it like one of the big guys it's definitely not the cat it's not the rabbits so who could it be <laughs> anyways um so thank you all for watching slash listening if you would like to play the human heart yourself you can find it over on itch and i believe the story has its own uh, Twitter page, or it just links directly to um, the creator's Twitter, and he has a link directly to it. I forget, um, but I'll, I'll link to it, I guess. And I believe that there is a Patreon, which I will link to, a Patreon. Can't talk today. And, uh, well, I guess that's it for now, and... Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>